Okay, problem number 61, an oh, absolutely delicious example. Um, and very, very life applicable. Engineering, kind of, sort of. Or maybe they just made it all up. Anyway, so in here we have the um, rotational motion inside the dryer. And you know it's a tumbling cycle here. And what they're giving us is that at a certain angle, we have the light uh, piece of clothing losing contact and falling down. So when you think about it, what is making uh, those uh, pieces of clothing rotate? Technically, there is force of friction between them. And um, at the top right here, right here, like at the, we've talked about how um, when it's the very top, right here we would have force of gravity being a centripetal force. And then it could be normal force as well. Um, the slowest cycle would create only force of gravity, a centripetal force. And so since at this point it already loses contact with it, that means, let me show you right here, that means that you have force of gravity still going down and centripetal force along the radius would be only a fraction of gravity uh, and i dubbed it as mgr as in the radial component of gravity which you will get by multiplying mg as is times cosine of 22 because they gave us 68 is this um right there they gave us this to be 68 so then that guy is going to be 22. um and that's how you solve it so loses contact then we have v is less than v minimum that would be required and then centripetal force in this case Ooh, that is wrong right here mgr important mgr would be your um centripetal force because force of friction is not considered there. They didn't, I mean, in real life, there is force of friction a little bit. But since we are going for the minimum, in that case, normal force is no longer there. And since normal force is no longer there, there is no friction to talk about. So our only component that provides centripetal force would be part of a force of gravity, the radial force of gravity right here. So then... Um, oof, mg cosine, goodness gracious, I'm all over the place here, mg cosine of 22 degrees will be your centripetal force, then m goes, again, mass, and they didn't even bother giving us the mass of that piece, because it's not going to, that's usually how you know when you think of, well, I cannot solve it because I don't know mass, that means that mass will eventually cancel, so don't worry about it. Um, so when I rearrange it, so G cosine 22 multiplied by R, R goes over here, and then you root, so GR cosine of 22, when you plug it in, 9.81 times 0.33 cosine of 22 gives you 1.73 meters per second. However, they want it in revolutions per second, twisted-minded people. Um, one revolution has the length of 2 pi r. You know how we go from um, uh, kinematics from linear to radial. They want omega, basically. Well, here you'll just take your meters per second and you will divide it by the length of one rotation in meters and that will give you revolutions per second. 0.835 revolutions per second is the rotational uh, speed or angular speed. There you go. Well, it's not, you, usually we use it as radians per second, but this is revolutions per second. We deliver it in the units that they require.